Hello, my name is Chris Sarisia. I'm with Code Pink. Um, as my comrades before me said, the title of the North Atlantic Treaty is, is a false narrative to mislead the public that this organization is strictly for, a strictly an alliance between the United States and Europe. And as you have heard, that is so far from the truth. The impact of this alliance continues to be felt from Asia to Africa to Latin America. And if anyone from Latin America can tell you, the history of US militar militarization in Latin America is insanely violent, insanely intrusive, and the cause of a lot of the issues and crises that we see right here within the belly of the beast. There is plenty of examples ongoing, future and in the past, that we have seen that NATO would just be another tool to follow through on US agenda that they have permeated through many of the regional organizational structures within Latin America. Black Alliance for Peace has done a lot of work highlighting how immersive this, this violent US agenda is in organizations like the core group, like the OSA, like the Caribbean um, Organization of Caribbean States. This US agenda has no intention for peace and only violence. Every talk that the United States has entered into for, for fighting for peace has been dead. As my comrade in Korea said, a lot of these nations have exhausted peace talks because they understand that entering into talks with the United States goes nowhere because it is just, it is just a, false, um, a, a false olive branch to just go into military intervention. So NATO is not just Europe. NATO is a tool that the US is trying to use to activate military intervention all over the globe whenever they see fit for whatever reason, whenever they want to. The US right now is in talks to bring Argentina as well into NATO. If no one knows, Argentina just selected their own far right leader, Millet, who intends to bring NATO, is welcoming NATO with open arms. And as we've seen in many other Latin American countries, these places that the US wants to create military bases in, that they wanna have military operations in, are not empty. They are not empty plots of land. They're not empty bases. They have people. And these people, more often than not, are black and indigenous people. We've seen it in Colombia. We've seen it in, in Cuba. We've seen it in Venezuela. These are black and indigenous people that the US plans on testing and building these military bases on. Right now, Millet in Argentina, who is very much open arms trying to accept NATO, plans on doing this. He will tell you, he will tell you that these lands are empty and barren, while at the same time trying to strip these lands from indigenous communities that are already there. And they are really, they are openly willing to discredit the right to land that these people have to build these military bases. And then as we see on the ground in the United States within the belly of the beast, when everyone talks of this migrant crisis without talking about the impact that US foreign policy has on this ongoing migrant crisis that is triggered by the US behavior, is triggered by the US agenda of going into these places, displacing thousands of people, thousands of people from their homes that then leave. There is such a grassroots impact to NATO. Yes, there are billions of dollars in, in aircrafts and nuclear testing, which are all real impacts, but there is a, such a grassroots level of displacing people from their land that the US at best, at best they see as a temporary roadblock to their agenda for NATO. This, this fundamental push of moving people off their land creates such a ripple effect, a ripple effect of resistance, a ripple effect of, of occupation, um, a, a ripple effect of displacement across the Americas. Not just, not just in, it, the idea of a North Atlantic it's not just Atlantic. China is not in the Atlantic. Korea, not in the Atlantic. Africa, not in the Atlantic. It's, it's not just Europe. And, I, and it's really important that as people who are organizing and counter to a US agenda that we understand that this narrative is meant to mislead the public. This narrative of, of Russia as our enemy, of China as our enemy, is meant to classify anybody who challenges the US as an enemy. The US is going, into, right now, Colombia is NATO's number one partner in Latin America, something that's passed on from a previous administration. And Colombia is a, is a really good example of how 
initially, you have to attack grassroots local communities first. You have to push these indigenous and African communities off their land first to then perpetuate this large scale agenda of US militar militarization, militarization <laughs> in the region. And it's not just Colombia. If the US is able to, if, if, if the US is able to immerse itself in Latin America, if NATO is able to become a military tool of US agenda, it will wreak havoc in the region. Right now we're seeing in Haiti a US funded intervention, a US funded invasion of a Latin American country using foreign militaries. And that's exactly what NATO will continue to be in the region if we continue down this path. The United States is trying to use NATO to legitimize this military intervention globally. They believe if they do it under the guise of NATO, it'll bring a sort of legitimacy that this is okay, this intervention is okay, we're, we're bringing peace through guns and war to regions that are ungovernable and in, 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 instability, and full of instability and unstable places. These are not unstable places. The US will deem a terrorist anybody who goes against them, anyone who's fighting the US agenda, the US will deem a terrorist and fight against. While creating a resistance through this displacement, while going into countries, taking people off their land, creating resistance where there wasn't, they create their own enemy. And then they label that and they say it's justifiable that we go into these communities, that we displace these people, that we test nuclear arms for enemies that don't even exist. They do not exist. And so I really think it's important to understand that, that this title of North Atlantic Treaty is meant to mislead the public. It is not just the North Atlantic. It is anyone who goes against the US agenda. It is not just Russia. It is not just China. It's Haiti as well. It's Palestine as well. Our resistance to US imperialism makes us an enemy. It does not matter. It does not matter where we are. It does not matter what alliance we fall under. Anybody who goes against this will be deemed a, a, a threat to the state. So I think it's important to understand the grassroots level that this that NATO has, not just in Europe, but in Latin America. Anybody, anybody, anybody going against the state is a threat. Now, the US has continued to legitimize and delegitimize any state that goes against them. And so we're seeing now, in Haiti in particular, I really want to use Haiti as an example because it's, that's, that's how they do it. It's, NATO is going to be a military tool used to carry out the agenda that is created by the core group, another organization backed by the United States. These groups are, are operating without any say of the countries they're operating in. So when we were talking about the core group, we were talking about a group that does not have any Haitians inside of it, that they are now following through on a military occupation through. And so it's really important not just to see NATO as this global occupying force, but it's working in alliance with regional bodies that are, that are promoting these anti-grassroots these anti narratives. So it's, it's the core group saying that, Haitian, that Haiti needs an invasion, and then soon it'll be NATO that will carry out that invasion. And so it's really important to stop it now Stop it while we have the power to stop it. Stop it before it already is working in alliance with these, with these regional bodies backed by the US. It's important to fight for the autonomy of the people who, will, who are living on these soon-to-be bases. These bases that the US plans to build are not empty. They are not without people that are already on them. And it takes pushing people off of their lands to build these bases, to test these nuclear weapons. You have to push the people that are already on it out. And the US does not really see that as a difficult problem. They do not. But the minute they push people off their land to build these NATO bases to test these nuclear arms is the minute they create a resistance. And so it's really important to stop it now to create, to stop the impact of already mass displacement that we're seeing from US backed militarization. It's so important that we see these grassroots impacts of these communities living on the ground in Colombia, in Cuba, in Haiti, that are then forming and organizing together to stop NATO. And if they're stopping the, the, the entrance of NATO right now on the ground, we have a responsibility as people in the belly of the beast, four or five blocks from the capital where they're, where they're planning these things. We have a responsibility to say, you cannot do this, we are here, you have pushed enough people out of Haiti. You have pushed enough people out of Colombia that now we're here. Now we're here because we have no other choice to be. 
and we're telling you to stop. So I really want, I really, really, really am imploring people to keep that in mind, that these bases are not empty. Where they build, are, there are people living on these lands who have lived on these lands for centuries. And so we protect, we fight for those on their land, we fight for those who have been forced out of their land, who are now in the belly of the beast, saying we refuse to leave again, we refuse to be pushed out anymore. We refuse to have any more of these built, we refuse to have more displacement come, there is, there is no need to have a military base because you are creating enemies. The more military bases you create, the more nuclear arms you test, the more enemies you create, the more of a resistance you create. And we don't want, we don't want resistance, we want peace. We want continued peace in the region and building a military base does not say peace, it is preparation for war. It is preparation for war, and it's not our war, it is the U.S.'s war. It is not our war to fight, but it is our war, it is a war that we are impacted by. So I really want folks to keep that in mind. These lands are not empty, these people are, not without, are not without a home. We live on these lands. There, when every, every bomb you test, there are communities impacted by the air, by the land, by the soil, the air we breathe, the water we drink are all impacted by these tests. It is not happening in isolation to everything else. These bombs are not being tested in vacant areas. There are people, there are people in every corner. When Millet talks about bringing NATO and bringing military bases, what he is not saying is that it takes pushing thousands of indigenous people off their land, off their land to build that base. Taking away their inherent right to land to build that base, to test those bombs. It is not happening in isolation. It is not happening on empty territory. It is happening to people. It's happening to people who live there, who are from there, that can no longer be there because of this US agenda of violence, of indiscriminate violence, happening not just in Europe, not just with Russia, but with everyday people, everyday people who have woken up and fallen asleep on the same territory that they can no longer do because all of a sudden this new NATO military complex has to be built. And it is not just Colombia, it's, it's in Atlanta, it's Cop City. It's Cop City where these large military bases that are destroying the land, destroying access to water, destroying the largest forest in the south that we no longer have access to. People live here, people have lived here from before and after. We will continue to be on this land and we will continue to reject all military occupation, military projects, military testing that the US has no consideration for, no consideration. At best, at best, they would see us as a temporary roadblock in these sort of constructions. It is not just NATO, it is not just, it is not just China, it is all of the Americas, it is all of the Global South, it is all oppressed, colonized people. So keep that in mind, thank you for having me. Thank you so much.